we have all been so concerned about our plants after the horrific heat that we've had in the last few weeks. And so I'm with Logan from Bartlett Tree Experts. And so Logan, what did we see? What did these poor plants go through during that horrendous heat? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of, uh, of leaf scorch and damage. You know, so part of the photosynthesis process is uh, stomatas. You know, so, so these openings in the leaves need to be open um, to, uh, to uh, have water transpire out of them. In the presence of sunlight, that provides the energy to break the bonds of you know, CO2 and, and you know, everything that's necessary to create glucose and oxygen. So if, uh, if, if the leaf can't hide from that well enough, it, the excessive energy from the sun is going to end up burning the leaves. So, so it's partially a defense mechanism uh, to help control water loss and to prevent you know, additional damage of you know, maybe the, you know, uh, the apical you know, buds might start drying out and dying. Mm. And so then you see all that burn and all that die back. Mm -hmm. So take like this maple here, like I think our first reaction is I'm going to trim all that off because I want to see the green leaves, but really that's not the answer. No, because a, a lot of these leaves are only partially burned. Um, so if we start, you know, uh, tugging off all of those leaves, th those are still providing a service of photosynthesis. Um, so we, we, we do want to see how many of those leaves are going to survive. And with you know, maples, they, they will set more buds. Ah. So they could actually uh, produce another flush of growth later in the season once it's recovered a little bit from the stress. And that's the same thing with conifers. I mean, we've seen like just the edges are just torched. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't want to do anything with those either. Yeah, so most conifers are only going to have one flush of growth in, in a year. So with some of those uh, ends that, that you know, end up being torched, um, we might get additional dieback from it. But you know, it, it wouldn't be advised to go through and prune it off and, and make additional wounds on there because odds are this summer we might get, um, oh. end up getting another heat wave and, and we might get additional damage to it. So some of those, you know, e even though they might be unsightly, some of those damaged and broken leaves uh, could actually provide a little bit of uh, shade and screening for some of those interior leaves. Uh, and so then what can we do? Because we want to do something, we want to help them, especially if we're going to more heat later in the mm -hmm. summer. Yeah, so uh, prior to heat events, uh, we would definitely want to uh, lay down a lot of water. Um, so if you think of the soil as a dry sponge, um, so to, to really rehydrate that sponge, we, we would want a slow drip of water on it for a long duration to really rehydrate that soil. Um, so, you know, we can, you know, we talk about making a rain day. You know, so, so bringing, you know, a soaker hose out um, or just, you know, some of those fan um, uh, sprinklers and just sure. running that for, you know, maybe three or four hours at a time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so that it can absorb it. It's not running down the hill exactly. and just going into drains. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. And then what about mulch? I, that's probably important. Yeah, so mulch is going to um, help protect the soil you know, from uh, excessive evaporation. Um, so if we have a layer of mulch that's maybe two to four inches thick, that's going to provide a lot of, uh, of shade and, uh, and protection from that, um, from that evaporation in the soil. So it's going to protect a lot of that water that we've you know, spent a lot of time and effort putting into the soil. Right, right. And then what about fertilizer? Will that help at all this time of year? Um, yeah, so a little bit of fertilization would help. Um, so there is a, a, a fertilizer compound called uh, potassium phosphite. So that, uh, that, that potassium uh, helps control the stomata function in the leaves and water uptake in the fine root hairs. So that, that can help a lot as a drought stress relief treatment. And then in the fall, having some slow release nitrogen mm. um, so we can you know, replace some of that burnt foliage. You know, so nitrogen pushes growth. So what we don't want to do this time of year is put on uh, like miracle Grow, which has a lot sure. of you know, readily available nitrogen and that'll you know, flush uh, a lot of tender new growth, that is, you know, odds are that's going to end up getting burned. Uh, and so, and do you recommend that people that have really damaged trees, and maybe these trees have been having problems for a long time, um, maybe those won't make it? Yeah, we, we have seen some, um, you know, uh, extreme dieback in, um, in, you know, very drought stressed trees. And we have seen some, you know, newly planted trees not make it. Mm. So we, we actually have a little perennial behind us that <laughs> The entire top died back 
and it's it's starting to push new growth from the roots. So so we 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 could see some regeneration of it. Mm -hmm. So so the best thing to do would be to to wait and assess to see the damage. Right. You know, um, once uh, once all of this is done in the fall. Right. Well, all good tips because I know we want to do something right now, but really I think the time is to just wait and be patient and do those tips. You want to water deeply, you want to mulch, and you want to fertilize just a little bit with potassium, and then do that other fertilization in the fall. So if you have any other questions, we'll have all kinds of information on our website, and then we can click you over to the Bartlett website because they have a lot of great handouts on there too. Thanks so much. This has really helped a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.